All right, guys, we are finally done with limits. That was a, a, a big unit, but an important topic, so I'm glad we spent the time we did on it. Um, we're now going to move into something called sequences and series, okay? Um, the, you're going to hear mentioned quite a bit, uh, uh, but I want you to understand the kind of the subtle difference between them. So a sequence, right, when you think about a sequence of something, sequence is a, basically it's a list. Okay, so sequence it is a list... Yeah, but it's not just a list, it's a list, okay, in a certain order. So when you think about, you may hear someone use the phrase, oh, it's a sequence of events. It's an event that happened in a certain order, right? It wasn't just a random list. So a sequence is a, is a list uh, in a certain order. In a series, it's similar, but not quite the same thing. A series is a summation, right? The sum, right? A series is the summation. Okay, of a given sequence. So a series is the sum of a sequence, okay, and a sequence is a list in a certain order. Okay, so we're going to be spending the majority of, of our time now, in the beginning, just looking at, looking at sequences. Okay, looking at sequences and, and trying to come up with the next uh, terms in the sequence. So what I have for, for you below is, is kind of fun, especially ones who kind of like puzzles or patterns or things like that. You might like problems one through five here. So what I have in one through five are five sequences. Okay, you can see three of them have numbers in them. Or excuse me, two of them have numbers in them. Three of them just have letters. They're all sequences, meaning they have a pattern, meaning based off the pattern, you should be able to predict the next uh, two items in the sequence. So what I want you to try to do is to pause the video and see if you can come up with the sequences, the next two terms in each sequence based off the pattern you've seen so far. Three through five are, are just kind of fun. We won't be seeing many of those um, here, but they are common sequences that you know. Um, so it might be kind of fun to do that. So hit pause, give it a shot, and uh, then hit unpause and see if you get the same thing I do. All right, so let's run through um, the answers here. Number one, uh, pretty obvious that the, the terms are just doubling, right? The terms are just doubling based off the previous term. So one, two, four, eight, sixteen. So the next two numbers, if I double the previous number of sixteen, it gives me thirty-two. And then if I double thirty-two, I get sixty-four, right? So my rule it looked like it was double the previous number. The next term, one, three, or the next sequence, one, three, seven, fifteen, thirty-one, sixty-three, looks a little bit more challenging. Um, so you kind of have to think about this a little bit. Uh, in this case, it looks like it's been the previous number that's been doubled, and then we're adding one. So if you take one and double it, you get two, and add one, you get three. Double three and add one, you get seven. Double seven and add one, you get fifteen. Double fifteen, add one, get thirty-one. So on to sixty-three. So if I double 63, I get 126, and I add 1, I get 127. And then if I double 63, or excuse me, I double 127, I get 254, and I add 1, and I get 255. It's so a little bit trickier, but, but fairly similar. Now number 3, 4, and 5. Okay, interesting. I'm um, curious if you got these. The next two letters in the sequence would be J and J. You might be asking why. Well, if you think about it, the the letters represent the first letter in each month of the year. January, February, March, April, May, June, and July. Number four, S-M-T-W-T. -T. The next two terms would be F. It would be S, and those represent the first letters of the days of the week. And then in number five, O, T, T, F, F, the next two letters would be S and S. And what those represent a common sequence are the first letters of each number. So one, two, three, four, five. And then the first S represents the S in six. And the second S represents the S in seven. All right, so those are all examples of sequences, okay? all examples of sequences, so you should um, um, be familiar now with kind of what a sequence is and, and all that stuff, okay? 
So sequences in math, okay, they're not going to be quite like that, but they are going to be similar. Sequences in math, okay, typically in the mathematical world, you're going to have some type of notation. So the way we refer to um, terms in a sequence is we use the following notation. It's A with a little subscript down below, okay? So A sub 1, if you were to see that, would represent the first term in the sequence, right? Because of the sub 1. I could also then say the second term is A sub 2. That would be the second term, and so on, right? So you use that little subscript down to the bottom right of the letter to represent the term, the numbered term in the sequence, okay? All the way up to what we call A sub n. And A sub n just refers to a general term, refers to the general term, general term, um, sorry, A sub n refers to the general term given in sequence. So typically it's kind of like your variable. Right, it's kind of like the the unknown, right? So I could ask you to find um, the tenth term or the twelfth term or the fifteenth term, okay? And usually that's just represented by um, the term a sub n. It just refers to any general term. So let's kind of see how this works. So I have this formula down below on the bottom left: a sub n equals seven n plus one. That's an that's basically a formula representing a sequence. And what this represents, the a sub n represents um, a term in the sequence. And notice that the n is not only present in the a sub n, it's also present in the right, in the 7n. So what it's saying is, uh, the question says write the first four terms in each sequence. So what I would say is if I want to find the first term, a sub 1, if I plug in 1 for n, that means I'm going to fall, solve for the first term. All I'm going to do is plug in 1 for n on the right, meaning my first term would just be 7 times 1, or 8. So my first term would be 8, okay, because I plugged in 1 for n. If I want to find a sub 2, I plug in 2 here to denote you need to let people know, right, that you're finding the second term. That's why we have to write a sub 2. That way I know you're trying to solve for the second term. And the way to calculate it is we're just going to plug 2 in for n on the right and add 1, and that equals 15. Okay. For the third term, it's going to be 7 times 3 plus 1, 22. And then the fourth term, 7 times 4 plus 1 equals 29. So basically, again, what those terms on the left, a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub, a sub 4, tells me, the reader, what term you're finding. Okay, and then that um, 7 times 1 plus 1, 7 times 2 plus 1, tells me how you calculated it, and then the far answers on the right tell me what the actual sequence is, what terms in each sequence were. Um, so, now that hopefully you kind of understand that a little bit, I want you to find me the first four terms uh, in the next problem. And again, I encourage you to pause it and try to find me a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, and a sub 4. So take a second, pause the video, see if you can find that, and then check back here with me. All right, so hopefully you, you work your way through them, and, and you might notice something interesting going on. So again, a sub 1, if I want to find the first term, I should be plugging in 1 for n. So 4 minus negative 1 to the 1 would be 4 minus negative 1, or 4 plus positive 1. So I get 5. For the second term, it would be 4 minus negative 1 squared. I have to put the 2 in for n. Well, negative 1 squared is positive 1, so 4 minus positive 1 is 3. For the third term, I'm going to plug in 3 into that exponent. Well, negative 1 cubed is negative 1. So 4 minus negative 1 is 4 plus positive 1. So that brings me back to 5. So I've got 5, 3, 5. 
If I plug in 4, notice I get negative 1 to the 4th, which is a positive 1. So 4 minus positive 1 and 3, I get 3. So notice what's happening in this problem is my numbers are just going back and forth between 5 and 3 and 5 and 3. Okay, so these sequences where I was allowed to just plug in a number for n to find that term in the sequence, right? So notice right here for the third term, I just plugged in 3 for n. When you can just plug in the numbered term in for n to find that term in the sequence, those have specific names, or that type of sequence has a, sp a specific name, and it's called an explicit sequence. An explicit, an explicit sequence allows you to find any term in the sequence by plugging that number in for n, right? So, for example, on the a sub n equals 7n plus 1, to find the fourth term, I just plugged in 4 in for n into the equation to find it. Okay, that's what an explicit sequence is. It makes it really easy, right? If I wanted to find the 100th term, I didn't actually need to calculate every number in the sequence all the way up to 100. I could just plug in 100 for n, and that would tell me the 100th term. That's what we call an explicit sequence. So if we go on to the next page, we kind of defined it a little bit better. So those sequences we did on the last page are defined explicitly. Okay, as we said before, they're defined explicitly. Okay, meaning we can find out their value by simply knowing their place in the sequence. And then the question I have for you is, can you come up with more sequences like this. There's really an infinite amount of answers, but can you come up with an explicit sequence using the right notation that I used on the last page? Well, obviously I can't check your work, but I'm gonna come up with one here. Let's see, let's say a sub n equals six n minus three. That one would work. I could plug in any number I want for n Okay, multiply it by 6 and subtract 3, and that would give me that term in the sequence. It's really like coming up with any basic equation. Okay, uh, It's really hard not to come up with one in this case. As long as there's an n in the equation on the right side, you're going you're gonna to be able to come up with an explicit sequence. So those are my favorite because they're the easiest to find. Okay, Explicit sequences. Okay, Really easy to find any term in the sequence. You don't need to know any numbers that come before it. Okay, You don't need to know the whole sequence. All you need to know is the formula, and then uh, all you have to do is plug in a number. All right, so that's one type of sequence. However, the another type of sequence uh, is, is listed below, and it says a sub n, again, to repeat a sub n, means to find, find a term. So to find, so this is saying to find any term in the sequence, okay, it's equal to two times, Right, so that 2 is just a coefficient. This a sub n minus 1, it says take the previous term. That's what the a sub n minus 1 means. It means take the previous term, okay, multiply it by 2 and subtract 4, okay? So notice how that's different. My formula, what did I need in my formula? I needed the previous term. Notice how in this problem up here, the one here, did I need, if I wanted to find, I don't know, let's say the 20th term, did I need to know the 19th term to find it? No, I didn't. All I needed to do is plug in 20 in for n with 6 times 20. 120 minus 3 equals 117. To find the 20th term, right, that's the 20th term, I didn't need to know the 19th term. All I needed to know is the formula, and I could plug in 20. In this type of sequence... Okay, I need to know the previous term. Okay, I need to know what the term was before it. So for example, if you just tried right off the bat to find the 20th term in this sequence, it would be 2 times the 19th term, okay, minus 4, right? That's what this formula right here. If I wanted to use it, that's how I would solve it. The question is, or the problem is, is I don't know what the 19th term is. And that's a problem, right? That's a problem. So on, on a problem like this, okay, where we need to, it depends on the previous term, okay, we would actually need to find all the terms before it to find the 20th 
term, which is kind of a pain. So we won't use these sequences a lot, but we will use them a little bit. So for example, let's say if I wanted to find the second term, I'm gonna write it down here, what are the next five terms in the sequence? A sub two. If I wanted to find the second term in the sequence, well, what's the term before the second term? It's the first term. Well, luckily, in this problem, and as part of every, uh, sorry, I won't use that term, as part of every one that depends on the previous term, you've got to give them a term to start with. And in this case, they said, we know you need a term to start with. We're going to give you the first term. So for me to find the second term in the sequence, I need to take two from the coefficient, multiply it by the previous term, which is 10, and subtract 4, which gives me the second term in the sequence it must be 16. 2 times 10 minus 4 is 16. Well, now that I have the second term, I can now find the third term. And let me actually reverse that and do a different color so it might be easier to see. So to find the third term, I'm going to do 2 times What's, this, what's the term before the third term? It's the second term. So notice I'm taking the second term and I'm plugging it in there. And then I'm going to subtract 4. And get, what's 2 times 16 is 32, 28. Right, so that's my third term. Okay, this one here is my second term. And we know it because the notation on the far left says a sub 2 and a sub 3. To find the fourth term, let's use green, a sub 4, we need to do 2 times the previous term. What's the previous term? Well, if I'm finding the fourth term, the previous term is the third term, so I put 28 there, and then subtract 4. So 2 times 28 is 56 minus 4, that's 52. 52 is my fourth term. So again, this type of sequence, it depends on you knowing the value for the previous term. So no, don't worry, I'm not going to give you a formula like this and say, find me the hundredth term and you have to find 99 before it. But I want you to understand how we find these. Uh, and then we'll do one more. Uh, let's just do a sub 5 to find the fifth term. We need to know the fourth term, which we've already calculated. Fourth term is 52. So we're going to plug 52 in there, okay, subtract 4, 2 times 52 is 104, minus 4 is 100. So we'll just calculate the next 4, and that's the fourth term. So again, notice that in this type of sequence, we had to know the previous term. And how do we denote that? Like, what's the notation to say, hey, mathematically, that means the previous term. It's that a sub n minus 1. So if you see that, that just means previous term in math language. It's me asking you, or the, the equation asking you, what is the previous term? Okay. So these sequences, I'm re starting to read down below here. So it says, as the sequences rely on the previous term in the sequence, this type of sequence is what we call recursive. Okay. We had explicit sequences that did not depend on the previous term. We could just plug in a number for n, and that would tell me that term. In recursive, you can't do that. In recursive, if you want to find the 10th term, you have to find the 9th, and the 8th, and the 7th, and the 6th, and the 5th, and the 4th, and the 3rd, and the 2nd, and the 1st. Okay, so recursive is a lot more work. Okay, um, you won't be seeing a ton of them, but you will be seeing some. Um, so recursive, uh, a famous recursive sequence, uh, is actually this thing called the Fibonacci sequence. And what it says, is that to find any number in this Fibonacci sequence, a sub n, all you need to do, okay, is, um, all you need to do is add, okay, um, the term before it, add term before, that's what a sub n minus 1 means, add term 2 before it, a sub n minus 3 means add the term 3 before it, etc. Okay, so the Fibonacci sequence says 
part. If I start out with one and I add the number before it, I'm gonna get one. If I wanna find the next number, I add the two numbers before it, I get two. The next number, I'm gonna add the two numbers before that, and I get two plus one is three, two plus three is five, three plus five is eight, five plus eight is 13, 13 plus eight is 21, and so on. Okay, and so on. Um, so that is the Fibonacci sequence. Don't worry, you're not going to be asked to uh, actually calculate that. I just wanted to show you a, a famous uh, recursive sequence that depends on the terms that come before it. Okay, um, another common sequence, factorials. Uh, let's come back to that. We're already at 20 minutes. Uh, I don't want to go any longer. Uh, we'll come back to factorial next class. The homework, okay, to do tonight are just uh, a few select problems from worksheet number two, and you can find that on Canvas, any of the ones that involve this factorial, okay? Um, so let's do this, and I'll even write it on here. For the homework, you can skip, okay, because the problems are circled. Skip um, 21, 23, 25, and 27. We'll come back to those, but I want you to do 1, 3, 9, 13, and 15, okay?